What's going on ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the channel. How can you make a K30 setup to wrap everything up and be forever needless of any more modifications? Well today's video is going to be about the fastest firing submachine gun in Battlefield 2042 as the thumbnail and title say it all, the K30. This video was actually requested by one of my subscribers and as always I'm here to deliver. We're going to take some serious look at the weapon, I'll try to give you some no BS advice on it and we'll see how things go. But before we start, if you're looking for more content like this, subscribe to the channel. We've got tips and tricks videos as well as guides, or weapon guides just like this one, and news around Battlefield franchise, so this is the place for you. Also if you have any video ideas for future, I'll be more than happy to hear them, so feel free to comment down below your suggestions as well. With all that said, let's get going. Alright, so about the weapon, this thing has a crazy 1200 RPM rate of fire, that's the fastest rate of fire in the game, and obviously this is a weapon for extremely close range encounters, so don't expect to be like able to hit some distant targets with pinpoint accuracy. However, in close range, you know, this thing will shred. My own opinion on the weapon, I just simply prefer the AC9 because it just dominates the K30 in the damage department and is generally a more reliable and stable weapon since it has a lower rate of fire. But to be honest, K30 is also a monster. I'd like to start from muzzle attachments. By the way, this is how the weapon looks like when you first unlock it. This is the stock attachments. So for muzzle attachments, my number one choice is going to be the tactical compensator. It will increase weapon accuracy in the expense of weapon recoil. Like I said, this is a weapon for extremely close range gunfights and because of that, personally I just don't give a damn about the recoil. I believe that more accuracy would come in handy in times where a stable weapon wouldn't and specifically in this weapon because the purpose is completely different than something like the PP29 for, for example. So yeah, I personally just prefer some more accuracy, but for you guys who want to focus more on recoil control and find this weapon harder to deal with when it comes to recoil, I would say you better stick to either Warhawk Compensator or the Champion Muzzle Brake. I've played the Champion Muzzle Brake, I guess it works just better on this weapon than the Arkham Tactical Muzzle Brake since the recoil feels like mostly vertical. However, if you guys want to sacrifice some accuracy to gain some recoil control and less muzzle flash, I believe the Warhawk Compensator would be a good idea as well. This one will be personal preference, but I wouldn't let go of my accuracy if I were you. I'm just saying. And about suppressors, we've got two light suppressors and two heavy suppressors. Since most of the gunfights with this weapon will be in extremely close ranges, I would remove the light variants out of the equation because they just give you minimap stealth in plus 30 meters and that range is pretty much useless for this weapon. The two heavy suppressors are completely up to you, although I just hate suppressors in Battlefield 2042, if you insist, I won't stop you. The weapon stats in this game are still just meaningless most of the times, but apparently the PP heavy suppressor decreases your muzzle velocity more than your firepower, and if you can interpret firepower into damage, although that's not completely true, I believe it's a better choice than the Type 4 heavy suppressor, because in close ranges, Muzzle Velocity wouldn't really play a big role, and it's all about the fire rate and damage. So this is how the weapon looks like so far, with all the muzzle attachments in place. Now let's take a look at underbarrel attachments. Here I believe we have an easier job and things are not so complicated. For underbarrel, I do think there's only one attachment worthy of using, and that is the MGL laser sight. Gives you hip fire accuracy while moving, which is absolutely necessary for a weapon like this one. Uh, with all the gunfights being head to head with enemies. It gives you a recoil control which might come in handy to compensate for that tactical compensator and there's literally no downside to it. Being simply detectable with all the benefits of this attachment isn't really a downside in my opinion. The only thing I recommend you to keep in mind is be aware of when your laser sight might give your location away. For example, if you're about to enter smoke or the enemy team is smoking to be able to push, just simply turn that laser off and you'll be good to go. Or maybe when you are turning corners or waiting for someone to show up and ambush them, keep the laser sight off so they will have no idea you're there. So your final destination for underbarrel attachment should be the NGL laser sight. Now on your way to unlocking this, you'll first unlock the BCG light grip and you better equip that and use it until you unlock the LWG grip. Then you need to play with the LWG grip equipped until you finally unlock the NGL laser sight. So that's your roadmap to get to that destination and here's how the weapon will look like after all the underbarrel attachments are in place. Moving on to ammo type and this one is a no brainer. Since this weapon has a fire rate of 1200 RPM, you will run out of bullets in a blink of an eye and that makes your early progress with this weapon suck to say the least. 
Because of that, once you unlock any magazine with more rounds, you better equip that. The same goes for when you unlock all the magazines. My number one choice will be the standard issue drum mag, which holds 50 rounds. And lastly, my third option will be subsonic ammunition, which works great with heavy suppressors and removes you from the radar regardless of the range. Plus, with subsonic rounds, you won't have tracers, which will lead to unaware enemies being shot from out of nowhere. However, I just don't recommend using subsonic on this weapon because 30 rounds per mag just won't cut it on K30. Here's how the weapon looks like with all the magazine options being fit into place. And lastly, we've got the weapon sights, which is completely personal preference and up to you. I believe this weapon needs nothing more than a red dot sight and anything else would be just useless, so all you have to do is pick your favorite red dot sight and that's all. This is how the final setup will look like. There's nothing really complicated about the K30 to be honest. Everything's clear. Personally, I just don't like people who overcomplicate weapon setups especially in battlefield games because things aren't really that complicated even though the weapon stats mean nothing hope you guys enjoyed and hope this was helpful if so make sure to hit the like button that way you'll trigger the algorithm to show this video to more battlefield players like yourself so yeah that'll be a huge favor thanks for watching and until next time guys stay cool